Hey everybody, welcome to Cold School. I'm James and uh, I share and if you like teach uh, different tips and hacks and tricks and instructions on how to uh, build uh, homemade air conditioners, home uh, ice chest air conditioners, um, uh, tips on instructions, making them colder, making the ice last longer, uh, any improvement you have to your pre-existing uh, ice chest air conditioner, homemade air conditioner, um, I lived off grid, used ice chest air conditioners for seven years, uh, been, uh, traveling using them on and off for, uh, 11 years. Well, I'd say I take that back. So I've been traveling for three, lived off grid for seven to eight years. And, uh, so, uh, I've done a lot of 11 years of clinical testing. Believe me, uh, there's a lot, uh, to, you can do to improve your uh, ice chest air conditioner. So today's tip is using an open drain plug to make your air come out of your air conditioner colder. And I'll show you how it works. So as you can see, when you fill up an ice chest, if this is your ice chest from the side and your pump is at the bottom, your water pump and your tubing, and then your radiator is either under the lid or on top with your air fan, either way, however you design it. So you fill up to the top usually with uh, ice and then you put enough water to make sure the pump is submerged in water, the tube is filled with water, and the radiator is filled with water. And as the ice melts, the ice level goes down and then the water level goes up, and then the ice begins to float. When this happens, it leaves the warmer water down here at the bottom where the pump is, and your colder water region is in this region up here closest to the ice. There's an immediate uh, temperature change between the just at the ice level, float level, and at the bottom. And if you add a drain plug that's open, and you have it placed the right distance from the bottom to the level you want it to maintain. When you fill up your ice chest to the top with ice and you add your water that you need to operate, when the ice level comes down, the water level doesn't go up. The water level always maintains the same level and it's always coldest in this region right here, always very cold always very warm over here and very cold so anywhere the ice level is the float level that's where where the water meets the ice that's the coldest region of the water so one way to explain this a little better is uh, in this little diagram here if you have a glass of ice water originally you fill the ice to the fairly to the close to the top and you fill the water up and as the ice melts the ice float level is just it reaches from above the water level to close to the bottom and then it starts to rise and the water level say it's probably 50 percent per ice per water and then the water level will rise and then the ice level will come down so when you have a straw and you're drinking from the top of the straw and it's at the bottom the warmest water's down here and if you ever notice when you pick the straw up and bring the straw upwards to where you're drinking here, you'll notice it's always cold, the fluid's colder here. So if you had a drain plug in the bottom of the glass, just like you would in an ice chest uh, air conditioner, the uh, water, the ice level will come down and the water level will always maintain. So here the water level doesn't ever move, it maintains. And here in the, in the theoretical glass of ice water it would maintain so if you always left your straw submerged at the bottom it always get the coldest water and I'll show you on this uh, comparison between these two ice chests now on the smaller one here I wouldn't worry too much about putting a drain in there to manage your water level your float level of your ice but on a big one like this or even larger I would definitely recommend it I've done clinical side-by-side -side testing and it does make your air colder and I'll show you here so this one doesn't have a drain the one i used to use for seven years off grid or however many years that i used that particular model with the uh with the drain 
the uh, I'd fill the ice up to the top and I'd put enough water to to run it and then I had my uh, drain plug open here so when the ice level came down the water level didn't go up because the pumps at the bottom and you want your cold water at the bottom but if you notice the ice level goes down the water goes up and they meet the coldest water is here and the warmest water is here so this is the smaller ice chest here. I put a drain in this one. Now this drain is for draining purposes only to drain it after use because this particular sized uh, ice chest air conditioner model is designed to put in a bag or a tote and carry it around so you don't have to uh, turn the whole thing upside down, hang onto the lid, hang onto the cooler and pour the ice out. So I installed this one on the back of the ice chest. This one's made by Coleman. And they do make different lengths, so you gotta watch that. Uh, this is a, a long to a medium to long length. The short lengths are too short for these, and the long, long ones are too long. They're made for uh, some of the thick the ice chests that are bigger that are really thick, and then the wall the wall is thick, so the the neck has to be thick. On these, the wall is fairly thin. These are actually fairly thin too, a little little thicker than these, I would imagine. And uh, I'll show you over here on the table the one that I use for the small ice chest air conditioner is this one here and you can see the length of the tube here the threads are on the other side is for the uh, the lock the locking uh, mechanism here and this goes from the inside this goes on the outside and that's the thickness of the wall of the small ice chest they do make them shorter, so don't make the mistake that I did when I first started ordering them. And then the neck was too short to go through the wall of that particular cooler. This one here on the back of the cooler, there's an indentation, like a cavity on the outside that goes in there. So, that, so uh, I'll show you real quick. So if you put the long one on this one, it would stick out really far. But on the larger ones with the wheels, there's a cavity in there. So you can have this and this type, instead of sticking out, it'll recess in there. But there's, like I said, an external cavity that you, you reach in between the wheels to, to uh, operate. So you got to make sure you get the right one. And uh, when I first started ordering them, uh, I ordered just the short ones, different different brands. And then I bought the long ones, different brands. And as you can see here with... Uh, this one compared to that one is a lot, uh, sh the one I use is, I'd say it's a long but medium length, but you can see that overall this one's a lot longer. It's actually too long. It's built for a, a thicker wall on the ice chest. Here's a smaller one too. Uh, this one's a different brand, but similar as a short one to this one here but they're too short so but you don't have to use order this from uh, any of the ice chest companies or camping companies you can use plumbing garden hose equipment um, now what I did on mine the one that I discovered this uh, technique to, to make my air colder um, I already had a built-in um, drain plug and it was recessed and what I did is I took some clear tubing like this and I just put it on the back. I opened the plug, filled the water level up to the plug, put the tubing on and ran it outside and I just let it run. And it works kind of like a drip pan on a uh, central air conditioner unit in your attic has a drip pan and then it never overflows because it gets to a certain level and it goes out the drain and that's how it works. But as you can see, with the small ice chest, the ice float level is only going to be maybe six to eight inches at the at the most. And, well, the water level is always at the bottom, so you probably wouldn't even go over three to five, four inches at the most. But over here, your warm water is going to be down here when your water and ice, your ice level is floating on the water level up here. So down here is warm water, up here is cold. So if you leave your drain open at the bottom, like that drain right there, on the back of this one, as long as it's high enough to have enough operating water at all times, just open it up and let it run. And then the ice level will come down, but the water level at the bottom will always stay coldest. 
And that's the tip for today. And uh, I highly recommend that. That's one of the easiest tips you can make uh, on a large ice chest air conditioner. That's all I used to use in the, uh, in the, uh, I'd say early days. I was going to say old days. In the early days, and when I first started using them, I was using large ice chests. So having a drain was very important. But when I started making these little ones, like that one right there, it was, those are to put, like I said, in these uh, tote bags and you can carry them around. And that's what that was for. But you can make these last for hours and hours by turning down the uh, water pump speed and, or putting a baffle on it. So anyway, once again, that's the tip for today at cold school. So I hope you uh, enjoy the video and I hope it really helps. And uh, I've done clinical tests, so I know having an open drain plug on a large ice chest, keeping the water level constant, meeting the ice, definitely big improvement on your cold air output. So y'all have a good day. Bye-bye.